for the internal anatomy of the sea urchin. Well, the first thing we better do is get you oriented because the sea urchin looks a lot different than it did when you saw it before. Okay, so the most of the oral end is intact, but you can't see it. The part that you can see is the aboral end and most of that's been removed. The only part of the aboral end that's still intact, okay, was sitting right at the midpoint, right about here, and we have the anus and the periproct and the madreporite. Those are still there. I'm gonna move them aside for a second. Notice that they're attached to internal structures, that plate is. Okay, so I'm gonna move that aside. Okay, and now we can see this multi-parted, whoa, look at that. So it's got hard structures in it, it's got muscle in it, okay, multi-parted feeding structure. Now we're looking at the ab-oral side of, Aristotle, of Aristotle's lantern. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm going to cover this to stabilize it. We'll flip over to the oral side. Here are the teeth of Aristotle's lantern, okay, and the lip. And actually, I've seen it done before where you can actually snip around here and take out Aristotle's lantern. So I'm going to put my finger here to stabilize it and also so that when we turn over again, I can move my finger now up and down. Okay, so you can see that this aboral surface of Aristotle's lantern is continuous, right, with the oral surface that is it's part of the feeding structure. Okay, now notice then that if the mouth is over on the oral surface that this tube coming up here Okay, it must be from the mouth that makes it the esophagus and then it expands right here. This is the stomach. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that ab oral right bit of integument and lift that up and you can see there are some tubes attached to that. Okay, one still attached. So this little tube right here, ah, hang on, let me just see how it can, there we go. Let me get that up like that. This little tube right here, this was actually attached on the inner side of the madreporite and it came undone. Okay, so I'm just going to like draw that back, okay, and make it possible to see underneath there. There we go. Now you can see this larger tube, it's held in with connective tissue and everything's so fragile I've really hesitated to tease that tissue away, but you can see this brown ribbon right here, that's the rectum leading to the anus. So that means that we have stomach, right, and then rectum. So this is intestine right here, and there would be more intestine right in here in this area, okay? Now, what else is, there's a lot of other structures in here, what else is in here? So now we have five pairs of gonads, okay, all around. Five pairs of gonads. And look at this. It looks like, I guess you can see it really well right here. It looks like this individual is actually gravid in terms of like having almost fully mature eggs. Look at those eggs. I'm sure that's what that is. Okay, this spongy, now I'm speculating here, but I'm guessing this spongy looking gonad here is a testis and this is an ovary right, testis, ovary, testis, ovary, okay, and I don't have a reference book or anything like that. I know that these guys don't have the sexes separate, that is, they're monoecious, so they would, and I know that they do make two kinds of sex cells, so I'm speculating there. Um, okay, I think we have the external anatomy of the sea urchin covered. Well done. Internal. Oh, that's internal.